<laughs> now tell me, please enlighten me. I, did, I mean, our history books only show uh, black faces. Tell me, uh, was it just blacks riding? Or I, I heard it was other cultures that joined in from other cities and towns that came down in, in the madness. Well, you may have a few, but most of the people that was looting, robbing, stealing were blacks from the inner city. Um, there was a few white, but most of them was black because it was occurring, the ride was occurring in the city of Detroit. And there was a lot of white people in the city at that time. They got caught up in that too. But I don't think they got caught up as much as a lot of the blacks did. Right. I mean, did you, I mean, to not, uh, I guess, uh, step uh, in their shoes for um, a minute or two. Did you feel that they was, you know, what, why do you think all that came about for, you know, uh, the riot? What do you think that, that sparked that? I mean, do you think they got any justice or felt justified after that? I mean, what you think all that was? Well, they said a civil disturbance, but what do you think it was? Well, you know, at, at that time, White was controlling everything. We didn't have a black mayor. We didn't have, I think, one person on city council. Uh, was, the city of Detroit was controlled by white. And I think that, like the police department, when I came there, there were only about 10 blacks on the police department. And you got a million and a half folks here. That's a lot. And they put us right in the black community, but we can spread 10 black police officers out. And you got three shifts. You got the day shift, afternoon shift. They, um, they had this informant out there, the snitch in the silver hearse. The FBI paid a violent felon to infiltrate Denver's racial justice movement. They had this white boy who came in all radical talking all of this rah-rah stuff. I've been telling people the strategy of these people. These are the FBI strategies. What they do, they get some loud Negro out here or some white boy who's real radical. It's always somebody, F the police. Let's do, we need our guns on these crackers. They, th that's who they're going to get. That's who they're going to get. Man, we need to get on these crackers. We need to build, bust these crackers. Heads, man, let's go down here. Let's get away from here and go over there and start burning these buildings down. And that's all by design. And then you show up and there's a, 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 a pile of bricks just happening that just happens to be laying there. That's by design. They want you to do property damage because all of this stuff downtown or wherever is it's insured. All of it is insured. So they don't mind you doing the property damage. Yeah. So they'll lay the bricks the bricks out there for you as long as you ain't out there ambushing people. That's it. As of this guy out there in Denver or in Colorado who infiltrated the activists out there. And, and they did the same thing in um, Ferguson and St. Louis. That's why all of, all of our good brothers were getting killed out there who were activists. They were killing a lot of our brothers. Our good brother Darren Seal. People like him. But this Quinn guy, this not Quinn, but the, the, the white boy who was working for the FBI yeah, where's this guy? Mickey Windecker. So this guy was in, he was entrapping a lot of people. He was setting a lot of black folks up, getting them to do a lot of rah-rah stuff and go, he run out there and um, create an altercation and then all the black folks get hemmed up. You, you, you see? So the FBI having infiltrators around, thats that didn't go anywhere. That's still around, ladies and gentlemen. That's the
the request of Mayor Cavanaugh, we've made state police and National Guardsmen available to assist in uh, dealing with what is a case of lawlessness and uh, hoodlumism and to protect the persons and property of uh, people in the areas involved. Here in Detroit, a city of war where snipers hide on rooftops, the violence continues. U.S. Army paratroopers, National Guardsmen, state and local police are continuing the fight against a handful of snipers. On the city's west side, a 150-block area is off limits to everybody. This is no man's land, an area of destruction and devastation. ABC newsman Tom McIntyre says it's hard to believe that this could happen in America. But here it is in Detroit, the nation's fifth largest city. I'm declaring a public state of emergency, and I'm uh, also indicating that I will prom promulgate such rules, orders, and regulations as I can. DPD. I retired from DPD after 28 years in 1991. Uh, and what was your position there? I'm the third deputy chief in the Detroit Police Department. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. So you can tell me about what the 67th riot. Oh, yes. I can tell you a lot about that. <laughs> Please take me back. I mean, was that, it had to be a challenge for you because not only that you were a citizen here in Detroit, it was your, you know, appointed duty and job to uh, maintain that, help maintain that situation. Tell me about that, please. Well, I had worked that night, the night the riot started, and um, I was off the next couple of days, that Sunday and Monday, and I got a call, phone call that Sunday morning that I have to come back to work. And I told him that I'm off the next two days. He said, no, everyone is back to work. He said, well, turn your TV on and you'll see what's happening. I turned the TV on and it was unbelievable. I mean, this TV, there wasn't that many channels at that time. You had two, four, seven, nine, even uh, 50. That was a Canadian station. And it, you, you see people stealing, taking, running, driving fast. And when I got to work that day, I had been on the job a couple of years. I used to get it when I was out in the. It was, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Did you recognize anybody you know? Oh, yeah, a lot of folks. I mean, not really. Looking, you don't have to say their names, but I'm just saying. <laughs> But they saw me, and I was in uniform. Everyone had to wear uniform. Uh -huh. And after getting back to work, after being off for about six or seven hours, we went right back in because we went on 12-hour shifts. And we had to try to get the city back in some type of water. Did you make any arrests that night? I made a lot of arrests. 